it's getting recorded right yes yes yeah. so our first question is like uh, implement str str list function so you need to return the index of the first occurrence of needle in the haystack or minus 1 if the needle is not part of haystack so haystack is this hello and your needle is ll and this starts at position 2 in your haystack so first index you have to return as 2 and here none of the i mean this bba this substring is not a part of this so for that minus 1 and in this question if you find that uh, needle is an empty you need to return 0 yeah that's it so how do you proceed or any queries here yeah actually the problem looks uh, straight forward right we just have to iterate through the string and find the first occurrence of the string needle right yeah and if we don't find the... it just return minus 1 so maybe just use a for loop um okay. and just keep comparing the first element of the needle with that of the haystack if they match then you go for another for loop or do something like a substring in c++ and see if you can get that value if you get the value you return the index or keep continuing oh yeah and in that small optimization like rather than running to the entire length of the haystack you can just run till the i mean you can subtract this up to two length right so it is if it is of length 6 you can run only up to 4 oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah that is true because you the needle might be a big string also that makes sense yeah, yeah. also whenever you find uh, the first index you return immediately yeah that is one thing yeah, yeah. Mm, you can break from there itself the moment you hit the first index yeah you want to share the code mm, yeah mine was not so optimized but i can just share it no problem <clears throat> yeah yeah you can see my screen yeah the code okay so here i am actually just taking these two sizes of the stack and needle and these are some of the base cases maybe if uh, my needle size is zero i just return zero and yeah. if my hay stack size is zero then i return minus 1 because i am assuming that if my hay stack size is zero i might have some thing in the needle right or else i want to come here and if my haystack size is lesser than the needle i return minus 1 again because uh, haystack may not contain anything and uh, i just iterate through the loop and I, as you said i can make an optimization here i just look for the first two elements if they are matching then only i go and do a substring but i could have started a for loop over here and just keep on comparing only those two elements which are actually similar same you know so that would be another optimization i could have done here and if yeah. it is same i just return or as return minus one yeah so it will be like uh, order of n for that for loop and substring will also internally will take right uh, yeah so for the substring also i will have to do it every time so in case uh, yeah like uh, most of the time it is matching few characters then i'll have to iterate through that that substring also so n p m m plus n or m n i don't know i think m n no because for every index you will be doing this i mean if condition matches then you will 
go through that substring so shouldn't it be n i mean if k is the length of a substring order of nk or so if it is if it is matching you know so it might hit that uh, matching point right so because if you have you should have same things always right lll always in the haystack and it will also lll so it might hit very quickly yeah. So unless it is something like L A L A L A L A always and just L L, I nearly just L L. Yeah, in that case it might be yeah. Okay. Yeah. So big O of M N right? Yeah. 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 So what like I mean? Yeah. So any other? So uh, maybe something like a two-pointer approach also. That is what they are discussing, right? Or maybe the other. Oh, in the solution, right? Yeah. No, no. I, I'm saying in the solutions. Yeah, yeah. In the lead code solution, they have many different variations for this approach for this problem. So anyone wants to share, like, you know. Yeah, uh, Shashank, then you go ahead. So this is like what I told you, like this is a small optimization, length of haystack minus length of needle I'm doing. Like I don't need to, if the length itself is two, I need to iterate only up to four because after that I won't, even if I go to the end, I can't get two more, right? So mm -hmm. this is one optimization and throughout the length of the needle, I'm just checking if, this is again a small, I mean, a tree, a tree, I mean, bit clever way of like checking the first index of the needle matches with that of the haystack. Mm -hmm. Which, where it matches, I mean, which character of the haystack it matches. So if it doesn't match, you just break from there or if it matches, then just you return the, that particular index where the first character is matching. Else in all other cases, just return minus one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mm, yeah. Yeah, but uh, we. So we, any doubt? Or? Yeah, this is uh, good. Uh, but uh, what I was thinking, like, can we go lower in time complexity? Because this also comes almost like O of uh, M and something like that. Yeah, right? exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So because I think in the solution they are saying we can go have a so approach, which will just say take O of N time complexity. The Robin car or something. Point. Not even two pointer. Two pointer will also take that much um, time complexity. Um, but they are talking about the Robin car. Oh, KMP car. also. KMP. Robin car. KMP. Yeah, KMP also, right? Yeah. Yeah, for finding the pad. But that would be like too much heavy for this problem, right? I mean, prefix, we have to calculate prefix sum and all those things in KMP and then do. So, but the time yeah, but complexity is like O of N. Yeah. So as soon as that is less, I think the solution would be good. So like in interview, what we are supposed to do, like this one or maybe the interviewer may ask you the optimized version as well, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it should be. So uh, what Shashank is saying for this problem, uh, lead code says it's easy. It doesn't mean that uh, you have to have an easy solution, right? So yeah. if you can find an optimized yeah. version, you should go for it. Yeah, for, for interview point of view, I mean, you should propose uh, that. I mean, there is no harm to propose that brute force. And if interview is okay with that, um, they will go and ask you to implement. But if they want some optimized, they may ask, find the optimized way. Yeah, but uh, interviewers won't be so easy on us, right? When they are going for an interview, they'll say, okay, this is easy. Yeah, that's fine, let's move on. No, <laughs> so they'll always. That, that that is fine, but it's up to I mean what they have in their mind. So they just want the basic basic language proficiency here, or they are looking some problem solving or some algorithm, algorithm here. So it depends what exactly they have in their mind. Yeah, but we have to be prepared for all. That is what I think because 
you might agree. never yeah, know that I mean, this might be the last uh, one and this might be the one of the interview which has uh, showcase all our strengths uh, so if they can go deep in this one right so so if there are two candidates like one is going with this the other one is going with rabin car for uh, what do you say kmp then definitely you would prefer the other one right latter one that kmp guy uh, not always i don't think so i mean okay, i mean but in, that, that, let's, again, let's I mean, not go yeah. that round okay. <laughs> so let's at least see if we can find some uh, at a better time complexity if anyone has to share or wants to talk about it you know Yeah, if someone has. Yeah, I think uh, Sonal was having right. Yes, I think if she is having. No, actually, I didn't write the optimized one. Like I also did the same thing only, but oh. I know like uh, it is K by KMP. We can do it. Okay. Do you want to discuss the approach on a whiteboard or something like that? Oh uh, no no I am not revised that so okay. I no can't explain. No problem. No issues yeah. Okay no so if there is nothing then let's move on then. Praveen you have anything to say? So I have not implemented but I uh, I mean couple of days ago I read about that uh, the the ribbon card if you want okay. I can give try to if Sure no problem. Just to actually see how that works. Okay. I can give it a try though. Yeah. Absolutely. Let me share my screen. Sorry, it is I've been carp, right? Yeah. I was saying Robin. Yeah. KMP is also there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not actually <laughs> reviewed the KMP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the other day I was just interested to actually some 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 of them go in my backlog so that was one of them uh-huh. so do you see my screen yeah yes yeah so so let's say, let's take this example so right and uh, the pattern on needle what we have to search is ll right mm-hmm. so so the we know that the brute force is um, let's say the length is this is m and this is n right mm-hmm. so we know that the brute force for this one is actually i mean 2n right if we have to search this ll listing here so brute force will be m into n yep so now what what uh, rebin carp actually will go say is that okay uh, if what is the best way or if we can further optimize it so what it does if somehow we actually um, get some sort of a hash for our pattern mm-hmm. and then look for that that hash here in this search for that hash so let's say uh, and how they actually does let's say uh, this is my sample space right all these alphabet a c d g h l j and let's say for simplicity i assign this some some value 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 i say yeah that should be enough here so so here in that case what will be the hash for my uh, this is string n it has the size and let's say so it has a 2l so 12 plus 12 right for simplicity i am taking 12 we can do use any operation here right okay mm-hmm. so let's say uh, it's going to be 24 mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. right? So now we know that the length. Sorry. No, 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 no. Okay. No one is saying anything. Yeah. So, so now let's say um, let's pick that. Now start uh, searching into the my main string and uh, my size is for pattern. My size is two. So let's first pick two alphabet and get the hash for those those two alphabet. That is H plus E, right? Which means H is eight and E means five. Five, yeah. Right? That is thirteen, mm-hmm. which is not equal to twenty-four. Right. Right. So let's. That means there is no match. Mm-hmm. So do the the same thing for these two characters. So this will be five plus twelve, seventeen. No match, right? Mm-hmm. Do the same thing for these two. So it's twelve plus twelve, twenty-four. Mm-hmm. So has match, right? Mm-hmm. And has match. Then actually, actually compare the character. Mm. Right? Yeah. Okay. So. This is the simple thing I just explained so far. Now the this is also whatever so far I explained that that is again. I mean to n, right? Because every time I'm calculating the hash. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. The ro- the rolling hash, right? You're calculating. No, that. that that is so far I have not actually reached up to the rolling hash. Okay. I just use the simple that pick the remove the word get that. And calculate the hash. So now in that rolling cap, so to improve it from there, so they introduce that rolling hash. So what rolling hash does? So let's say I pick the first two character, right? H and E, and calculate the hash. Eight plus five, and match with my pattern. So when I did not find the match, then what I have to do? I have to add a new character, move my pointer, so I can add a new character which is L, and at the same time I have to remove the first character, this. Mm-hmm. Calculate this hash. So if I do whatever I do have here, right? I do have here thirteen. So if I do here, thirteen minus this character, thirteen minus H is eight, eight plus new character E. No, sorry, L, right? L, L, yeah, L, L, yeah, plus twelve. So that will be give me the new hash, right? Hmm. So that will be seventeen. Nineteen. Seventeen. Yeah, seventeen. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry. So, mm-hmm. so this this way. So mm-hmm. when I'll seventeen. So now my my pattern is E and L. So there's no match. So mm-hmm. now I have to move my pointer and L add the next character, which means seventeen minus E five plus twelve. It's equal to twenty-four. Mm-hmm. So this is the way. This is called the rolling hash. So I'm I'm actually getting the next hash in a constant time. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So now I'm calculating the hash and comparing it in a one shot in one one iteration. Yep. Oh, fun. Yep. Yeah. So as soon as I find the as soon as I find the hash map. Has match, then only I will compare that hmm. this is string and this is string. Hmm. Yep, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So now the, the the complex part here in the rolling ha- this technique is actually getting that hash part. Right. Sometimes I have seen in rolling as they are using modulus. Is it to avoid overflow? What I mean here, yeah, the more, yeah, more, yeah, more. Yeah, more is actually to uh, 
avoid the overflow. Okay. Because so, you know that, let's say your string, because how they actually calculate the modulo. So the formula actually in Rolling has what they use to avoid. Uh, so if actually, okay, if, if your hash function is not smart enough, right? So, so let's, mm -hmm. let's take an example. Uh, let's say your input is A, A, B, A, B, something like. And uh, let's say we have to, we have to look for B, A, right? Yeah. So what, is, what is the hash for B, A? Is three. three, right? So when mm -hmm. I'll get this, so here hash is two, not match. But you see here, here hash is three. Match, yeah. So now hash is three, and then I will compare it. But you know that this is not the, the, the exact string what I was looking. So if that kind of situation occurs multiple times, and you, you so you ultimately your, um, you will end up with MN complexity in that, in that case, if your hash is not smart enough and it will compare, it will match with the wrong string. Mm -hmm. do, you do you guys follow me here? Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's why your, your hash function should be smart enough to actually give you the unique, unique hash for that particular pattern. And how actually uh, it does, it does, so whatever sam your sample space is, like let's say here in our case is 26, right? We, if we just consider the, the uh, small alphabet. So that's yeah, how the actually, case, yeah. yeah. So how it actually um, calculate the hash here. So it calculates the hash, your, let's say this is P, string P. So it's do that P and P zero multiply by your sample base is your, that is your base to the power. And what is the po position for that bit in, if you consider from here, zero to one, M let's say is length is L minus one plus P one into L minus two, right? And so on, and the last will be like this: p uh, l minus one, b zero. Okay. So now with this formula, so to calculate this this rolling hash, so what you need here, you need to subtract that part, right? When you have to actually calculate the the next next rolling hash, so this is your this is your initial hash, right? Yeah. So what you need to do that, whatever you have here, this minus p zero b l minus one. So now what it will give you if you subtract this particular from your complete hash. This will give you this part. Yeah. Right? So it'll just subtract the first one, okay. Yeah. And now with this whole, I'm sorry, actually it's messed up here. Should I? Oh, it's okay, yeah, it's clear, yeah. No problem. Okay. So subtracting so now, first one means you are taking out the first character, right? Yeah, subtracting right. this first, first part, this part. And now after subtracting, multiply the whole with the base. Your yeah. base. So which will make it L, L minus one integer, from right? L minus two to L minus one, right? Yeah. yeah and yeah. then, then plus the new, new, the new character, hmm. whatever the Which new is. character is that. Yeah. So this will give you the new hash. Hmm. It's a very smartly designed algorithm, like find the, finding the characters, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
Cool, yeah. Really beautifully explained, yeah, Praveen. Thank you. Now it's very clear, yeah. Yeah, if you guys want to actually, I mean, um, that uh, YouTube channel that Abdul Bari, he actually mm -hmm. explained really beautifully this thing. Mm -hmm. If he, oh. somebody wants to actually understand this Robin, Robin Kart, mm -hmm. actually I follow him. And I mean, after watching one or two times, that that made the things clear. No, but I you explained well. So yeah, now it's more clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But actually, how to keep it in memory for long term? Like now, he has explained it's well and good. But again, after like a month or something like that. But actually, the conceptually, it's now clear, right? So it's just calculating that rolling hash. But the way he took the rolling hash to the complexity level, so that yeah. made things more more clear. clear. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that uh, you you will surely remember, I yeah. think so. And and you know that I mean, what I do follow that. Uh, try to remember things. So, so when I start learn it, I mean, after after a long long time, I don't think so. I mean, after college, I have ever used this. <laughs> yeah, have been too. So, so so it's a long time ago I read that. So so I was clueless that what is rolling has couple of times that rolling has come. So I was thinking I heard about. So so I watched this video and then next day I repeated that again. So I repeated that for a, a couple of days, and then uh, I start following the space learning to to give. And after I think I'm repeating it after three four days. So now I think um, I'm I'm okay with that. Maybe after two weeks or three weeks, I'll try to actually revise it again, and then it will go back in my um, in, in passive mode in my brain. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a good. Way I to think do, I mean yeah. that's the technique actually working for me. Until unless if I do actually uh, multiple times in a repetitive way, yeah, it's difficult to remember. Right, right. And things become more clear when you teach to others, right? Like when exactly, you exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that that actually help you to if if there is some some uh, small things which you may miss. So those will actually. Uh, you can recall and you will not forget, forget those things yeah. again in the future at least. So I, I think, I mean, now today as I explain that, I don't think so for next one year, I'm going to actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me. at least we will understand it conceptually now. It's, it's more clear by looking at the way you explained it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, um, on Geeks for Geeks, uh -huh. they have a re really good implementation for this. Part. Oh, okay. Yeah, the implementation might be not so easy for now, but yeah, once we look at it again, it might be okay. Yeah, no, when you will see that Geeks for Geeks, I believe, mm. uh, I mean, in one shot, you will understand it and you will not miss anything. Okay. So you okay. can give a try uh, today. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Pravin, did you, did you submit this code? No, I did not submit anything. I did not implement oh. that. You you are saying that STR, STR function? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, like, I, uh, rolling has thing. No, I have not implemented it. Just uh, actually, we discussed yeah, that. Just discussing, yeah. So, I, yeah just, just. I, I submitted that code and it, uh, it was uh, like uh, compared to other submissions, it was very less, like 5%, just cross 5% of the submissions. Yeah, that's fine, you know, because uh, Shashank yeah, yeah. also said that uh, okay. yeah. for, the, for this uh, easy implementation, should we really go for it? But now we came up for this solution, you know, why not discuss that approach also? It might be useful for some other problem solution. That is the reason we were discussing this. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Should I stop? Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah, one thing I don't know, I mean, I don't know why people are in that trap to compare the time. <laughs> I, really, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I never actually pay attention to that. And I never actually understand that what is the algorithm lead code used behind that. Because sometimes I know that, I mean, I'm not using any extra memory. I'm not using extra uh, computation. I still share that in, in terms of memory and in terms of... Uh, no, people actually in discussion, in discussion forums, they like, right? No, like 100% time or 90%. So if it is 100% time, then more views will come on that. And if somebody will say 5%, 
very few people will look for that i don't think so it's about the views but it just want to we want okay. to be very sure that whether we implemented is the right thing or not so yeah that is also sure sometimes we don't have to follow blindly the way lead code actually exactly. reads us but we should discuss the different approaches yeah and and also try to implement other yeah, approaches even if they are not used anywhere no one has used uh, for this right so. yeah i mean i think i agree to some extent but you know that uh, if you will implement in a uh, modular way Mm-hmm. you ha- you split your your code in a multiple functions so definitely it will degrade your performance instead of uh, seeing those those one or two line smart smart solution which i mean difficult to understand mm-hmm. exactly yeah. right uh, but only thing why the dilip said you know i also understand the way it comes to like whether i have implemented is a correct one or not i want to be sure right so i will at mm-hmm. least go for that numbers initially yeah, yeah. but then i'll yeah, start even, right explore it yeah. yeah i was expecting this was the best approach we can do so right, that's why right, right. Yeah. it has to be somewhat better then no problem Uh, could i mean de- de- depends on you know that i mean what is the sample space they are or or test cases they are using for this yeah <laughs> yeah internally they keep on changing also you know so like you, you, you know that we 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 know that okay bubble sort in some sort of selection are of n square but you know that in quick sort internally they use this insert insert sort for a sa- small sample mm 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 so i think what pravin explained uh, i mean this is a discussion code so this is like length of the needle they have taken length of mm-hmm. a stack and this is that relative order indexing what he was doing in the hash map mm-hmm. a1 b2 all those things and mm-hmm. for mod he has used the what do you say maximum integer mm-hmm. and he has defined the what do you say this is the ha- uh, base what was saying base raised to the power n minus 1 okay. so mm-hmm. this is what nd and this is your hash of needle and this is your hash of the uh, haystack so is going through each uh, first is going through the uh, bo- both the length of the string like throughout the length of the hash ha- haystack and the needle and calculating the hash for them and after that if they found that hash of needle and haystack matches that means now you need to compare the characters so is returning zero and this is the rolling hash part right like from i mean now you start matching uh, which like 23 got in the haystack and 23 should also get in the needle something like that so for right. that is using this uh, what you say the function rolling hash explanation what he was giving hash of haystack minus this into nd yeah. nd is your the base list to the power that and modulo and if it matches you just return that particular index where that it was matching hmm. yeah and you know uh, and dilip uh, uh, here in ribbon cup so the base is i mean that has has function is really important so if if somehow it actually the scenario what i just ex- try to explain where ha- ha- it match with the different different pattern the hash then hmm. you will be end up with the mn complexity okay okay i think we are supposed to use all these things when you have a very large string of length very long string length and pattern True. is also like big here yeah. so that then yes. only rolling has become something of useful otherwise yeah, so like a, you have to you have okay. to search a string in a big document yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. yep this is good too yeah Switch. in a high level now it is slightly clear in the implementation yeah, part also yeah cool thank you thank you shivan yeah yeah thank you yeah thank you so the yeah. next is like asteroid collision we are given asteroids of integers which are represented in a row and for each of the asteroid the value absolute value will represent its size and sign represents the direction and it moves both asteroid moves all the asteroids moves at the same speed you need to find out the state of the asteroid after all the collisions if two asteroids will explode or two asteroids moving in same direction will never meet so here if we see 5 and 10 both are positive so both are going in same direction but 10 and 5 they are going 
since absolute value of this 10 and 5 we say 5 is smaller so 5 will be reduced to 0 and you will be left with only 5 and 10 and here both are of same size and both are in the different direction so both of them will collide and both of them will reduce to 0 so uh, nothing will be left in your list and here again if you see 10 and 2 will never collide because both are positive so both are in same direction but if you see here 2 and 5 2 and minus 5 then i think for 2 and minus 5 you have is uh, absolute value this 2 is lesser so 2 will completely collide i mean will reduce to 0 now you will be left with 10 and minus 5 then this is again smaller and this will be reduced to 0 so resulting will be 10 your yeah, same thing goes here like uh, if you uh, would uh, yeah minus these two if you see both are in the different same direction so nothing will happen but these two are in the what is these two are in the, the different direction so both of them we should explode right no 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 actually you see the first minus one is going towards left and the one the one positive one is going to right so they are in the opposite directions So any negative value will actually move to the left and any positive value will move to the right. Right here. So minus 1 and 1 at index uh, 1 and 2, they are not going to collide at all. Yeah, minus 2 and minus 1 will never collide because they are in the same direction, right? But minus 1 and 1 also won't collide because minus 1 is going to left and one is going to write. But like in question, it is mentioned if they are of same yeah. uh, size, then it should like collide. Both should no, coll collide. They should collide. But if you uh, carefully see what they say is uh, based on the sign. If sign is minus, it means it moving towards the right side. Uh, sorry, left side. Okay. And if it but is how positive these sign. Problem? Okay, so okay, I'll, I'll just explain on the whiteboard, you know, so things are slightly clear. Okay, okay. Yeah, so for our question, if you see five, so if you see this one like the five, and then we have 10 minus and five. minus five, right? So this five actually is positive. So, so it will go in this direction, right? So 10 will be moving in this direction and minus five is moving in this direction because it is a negative value. So what happens here okay. when you come here, these two actually will collide because they are in the opposite directions to the five and minus 10 and minus five. And therefore our sum will be something like five and 10 because five will collide with minus five will collide with 10. So that will, that will be actually uh, removed, right? Yeah. Okay. So that is one thing. And if you go for the other one, what we were discussing here, the minus two minus one. So it was like minus, minus two minus, minus two. one. So minus two minus, minus one. one and one and two, right? So in this case, minus yeah. two is moving in direction, this direction, minus one in this one. And one is moving to th this direction and two to this direction. So here no one is colliding with each other. And so your actually answer will be the same because no one is quarreling, nothing is going to happen. It will just be like this. Got the point, right? So okay. if, if it would have been like this plus and minus one, then this direction then it will will collide, have been yeah. reversed and then it will collide. And then this both yeah, will yeah. go out. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was thinking that if plus and minus is there, then definitely I mean, no, no, yeah. no, it's not. That I way. also just check the uh, the signs and not check about yeah. the direction. That is why I did wrong. Yeah, yeah. I initially, I was also just blindly following. Okay, if there is some, both of them are uh, complement of each other in this sign, then yeah, then I used to uh, follow something. But now 
after looking at that you know that example yeah the, the last example makes clear. things very clear yeah yeah sorry yeah go ahead shashank yeah i mean uh, examples are over only and the length of asteroids is like this 10k and will be a non zero integer between this range so how do you like approach in this case i mean well actually well, the brute force way would be you know to go through traverse the whole array first you know there will okay. there might be n passes to that based on the size of that array if the array size is n so every time you go through the array if you find uh, two of the values which which are actually in the reverse uh, what you say the colliding directions you know so just take those two values and find out which what is the resultant sum for those two values keep moving like that and then keep it doing for n times then you will get that area right so something like that how will you take care of directions so if you take the example 1 5 okay, okay. the best example would be example 3 right? if you take example 3 you know You have ten, two, and minus five. Okay, so what mm -hmm. we'll do is yeah. first we'll go to ten. Okay, no, nothing, no actions to be taken because two is also positive, right? So then go to yeah. two. So we can see that two's left is minus five. So we can actually collide here. So two can collide with minus five, and two will disappear. So then what will what we'll have is ten and minus five. Correct. So then we yeah. have already at the end of the array. Then we again start. fresh from the array saying okay i have two elements now 10 and minus 5 so but both of the uh, values are 10 and minus 5 uh, are different directions or uh, same direction uh, colliding direction right 10 and minus 5 they can collide 10 is going towards uh, right and 5 is coming towards left so then they can collide and 5 will disappear because 5's value is lesser than 10 the absolute value right and therefore the value yeah. becomes 10 so you'll have to do two passes for uh, a size of 3 array right so if the array size is large then you will have to do if it is like 10 then you will have to do at least nine passes right so that will so be a whenever, course way of doing it so whenever you see a sign to the right of element of opposite sign like the current element and element to the right of the current element is having opposite sign then they'll collide right Uh, i would say like when when you are any index if it is positive index and if i see on the right i have a negative index then only i will collide yeah yeah ha huh, same thing i was like yeah right yeah, okay. so well, it, it looks like i mean some sort of a flavor of monotonic stack right correct yeah because as soon as we actually see the different sign then we have to to check what we have on the stack right it is so, it is uh, monotonic stack implementation in the brute force like just only array if we are using so after checking if they are colliding or not then we just delete it from the array or like uh, store some indexes and delete it later yeah actually uh, the brute force if you are using brute force you have the luxury of using more space right so i would use a different space you know because deleting from an array again it depends on languages some languages actually are efficient in doing that and some are not so maybe you use have a separate uh, space always a resultant space which you are going to return so in that you keep collecting all these values and then again in the next iteration use that as an input that I, okay. that is the way i would do for the brute force to yeah, be very clear is like that array size keeps on changing and it will either overflow or something like that it will give errors uh, overflow you will have to manage that size every time yeah like overflow will, error will error. not happen but yeah. yes overflow uh, i mean in brute force i think i mean if you convert to a list instead of an array that will make life easy right yeah or we can make them zeros as uh, they are sure that Um, item uh, list elements would be non-zero. We can make them zero, and at the end we can 
ignored all the filters. Yeah, yeah, that also yeah. one way. Yeah, that's that's also yeah. yeah. Zero is also good. Yeah. Easy. And did they say? I mean. Zero, zero is not a valid entry in that. <laughs> yeah, maybe some other invalid yeah. entry like a int min or in act something like that. <laughs> it, it's yeah, there yeah, that uh, give non-zero. Yeah. yeah, that is a good suggestion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, but I good. think it's uh, what you probably you rightly said. It 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 is a monotonic stack implementation, and you quickly got that. Uh, for me, it took some time to get that, but yeah. so that is the way it is or else it uh, if you don't use a stack uh, i don't think you get a uh, of n uh, time complexity yeah. yeah or else you have to do the brute force way and it will be o n square and i i don't think anyone ever thought of a brute force way in, even in the discussions mm, yeah like Do you want to share the code? No, you good. Yeah, no problem. Uh, no, I'm. You want to share code? I'm saying. No, no. Actually, uh, let's go with your implementation, the stack one. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. You already have so, that idea. Yeah. Or yeah. if anyone wants to share, delete or. Yeah, if anyone wants to share, anyone. Okay, then let me. Yeah. So here it's like as long as you see the sign of a asteroid, I mean, so every element of the array, if you see if it is positive, just you append it to your stack. Now, as long as your stack is not empty and top of your stack that is greater than zero, and this is for checking like uh, which one would be demolished to zero, right? Mm -hmm. The absolute value of uh, what do you say? because on the top of the stack you will always have positive elements yeah, right so you only need to check the next element like a will be on the top of the stack you just check the absolute value of this uh, mm -hmm. this one so if both are equal i mean like if this one absolute value of the stack uh, as the value which you are going to append if that is greater than the top of the stack then you just pop that element out of the stack and here it's like as uh, now again if your stack is not empty and top of your stack is greater than 0 and it is mm -hmm. equal this is the case where both of them are equal and negative direction then again that element will be popped out from the stack right 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 yeah so this Very is that condition yeah otherwise if it is negative just append that stack else i mean if your stack i mean here you, if your stack was not empty but if the stack is empty then you need to append it to the stack mm -hmm. and on line 5 and 6 you are checking if your the your current ast value asteroid value is yeah. uh, positive right so if it yeah. is negative then only you are coming in line uh, in the else of 7 7 yeah so in yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, while loop when you are popping you don't have to check that value if it is negative or not correct no yeah so that is one good way of you did that or else if you would have not done that then in the line 8 you would have to check that specifically whether it is a negative Explicitly. value or not yeah yeah hmm. yeah so i mean only when negative then only these are the so only two cases like if it is equal then just demolish the, everything i mean it will be zero at the top of the stack or if uh, what you say if it is not equal in size the smaller will be reduced to zero so you, popping itself means you be are reducing that element to zero right yeah so here you are returning the stack but stack will the have stack. all the elements in the reverse direction right uh, the stack will have whatever elements it will be left stack means a list here it is stack is like a normal list only okay so, so you are storing in a list element, yeah whatever uh, i mean Valid elements will be only present in your stack. No, that's correct. But what I was thinking, yeah. like usually stack in the case of C plus plus the implementation in the reverse form, you know. So I'll have to okay. pop everything from the stack and then create in a array and then return it. If it was C plus plus, but for Python actually it uh, you have that list right. You can use list as a stack. Yeah, right? it's like normal. I mean, it's a list only. Just name is stack. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah, C plus plus also. That that therefore there are two different variations, and then you can either use a vector instead of a stack. You know. Okay. So that actually will be almost a similar implementation what you did. Yes, and yeah. And regarding time, what would you say? This will be O of n, right? N only, yeah. Mm. Because the one for loop, I mean, the one for loop is running. Yeah. yeah so both, even if, both will be O of n, right? Time and space. Yeah. Stack is that. Yeah, space will be for O of n. Yeah. Good. For the brute force, I think it should be O of n only, right? Time complexity. Uh, brute force. I just, I will just. Uh, like uh, why I mean like I didn't get that one I think it should be O of n because I was running just one loop uh, but you will still have to keep going through uh, various iterations right because uh, in one iteration if you just go and uh, like for the example 3 if you have 10 2 and minus 5 in one iteration it will be 10 and minus 5 right so you'll have to again run another iteration to actually look for 10 and 5, find if that is an equation. From beginning. Yeah. yeah. From, oh, yeah, yeah. From, so uh, like yeah. it is taking n minus 1 passes, right? Yeah. So it will it will keep on reducing for every pass. But big of oh, big O, oh, it will be big O of uh, n square, right? So even though and it is reducing every time. Yeah. So yeah. So every time you, if you are reducing one element, so initially n, then n minus one, n minus two, and so on till one. So it will be n square only, no? Because right. Because if you take the example four, nothing is going to reduce that. Then n so plus it, n plus n into n will be yeah. n square. So it will always be okay. n, 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 n. Okay. Okay. N, I got yeah. it. N times. I just. I have just I think used one past that is when it was giving wrong answer only. So, oh. okay, got it now. Nope. Oh. Yeah. The and worst case we are talking about, yeah. yeah. So I actually, yeah, uh, in, give, sorry, go ahead. I was saying we have to give the worst time complexity only always, right, to the interviewer. We can explain uh, both the cases. Average is oh. this much and then <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, to be yeah. saying, okay, I've did a very good job. So average case is this, but the worst case is like this. So something like that. Best case. Yeah, best case. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, okay. If I, I will share my code in the C plus plus. It is uh, more of code what I've written because you have uh, written a very concise solution and very optimized way. Where is that? I think I lost that. Okay, let me. Okay, I'll just go into this thing. Yeah, so you can see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, the way it did in C++, I used a stack also, but it was too big. Therefore, I was explaining you. And uh, so we have that STL stack, right, in C++. So yeah. it, it's very clumsy the way it is. So this is a stack, and then you go through this whole thing. And the way you did for if stack is not empty, I check if the asteroid value is negative, and the top mm -hmm. stack value is positive. Then only I compare both of them. And if the top of stack is lesser than the absolute value of the asteroid, current asteroid value, I'm just popping out, okay? Or then I come out of that while loop. Uh, if my stack is empty, I push. And if my stack, again, I look for these two values. If it is a negative value, this is a positive value. And then if both are same, the way you did for, again, I pop it. 
and in yeah. this case again i look for if this is negative value and this is positive value and then i look for the stack of top so greater than the stored value then i just continue i don't do anything mm -hmm. okay or else i come here and i look for in the other case when my top of a stack value is lesser than the absolute value because i don't want that value then i just pop it out or else i just keep on pushing it so there is lot of available minutes i did okay this you are popping right right so when the size equal that time you are popping and when your top of the stack size is greater than sorry less than less the than, yeah. next element then you pop it okay. yeah so in when i come out of the loop or else in the loop i just keep on looking for the top of the value if it's lesser than the absolute value of the asteroid then i keep on popping in this one right so that i do but if you come out and then i look at the stack you know then i can have to pop this everything out right and then i can convert it into a vector and then return so that is one way of doing it second the way you did in the list uh, yeah. in your python i did it using a vector which is a dynamic array right so i just use it the way exactly we, we can use it as a stack also the same thing the same approach I've all, so directly you can't return in c++ yeah so yeah this way you can return so i can just return oh. it from here now oh. i'm just returning the rest value because this can be used as a list right keep on popping yeah. from the back side yeah but the rest of the all conditions are same nothing changed same yeah yeah so what you did are almost the same but more code yeah I mean, almost. Same. So here you are uh, implementing stack as an array, like. Yes. Yes. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. Now, anyone, any other like wants to share? Okay. Then we can switch to next. Yes, please. so minimum distance uh, your minimum distance you have to in order to type a word using two fingers so you are given a board of 5 times 6 this one and uh, and all of these boards are filled with your capital, capital english letters and first one is as located at 00, 00 and letter b at 01 and so on like that till z 41 and uh, you will be given a word you need to return the minimum distance to type the word using only two fingers and uh, distance between them will be the absolute euclidean distance like this one uh, absolute distance difference between the coordinates and just add them and uh, initial position of the two fingers are considered free so you don't count your total distance also your two fingers do not have to start at the first letter or the first two letters so like word cake is given so if you put your finger here first finger at c so that will be zero and you go to a so from here to your distance two is there ca and ke now when you come here k to e this is one distance so this is one and this is two two plus one three so this is the three distance they have released and again happy if you see so happy is like h A if you go, so one way is like this. This so it will be two, H A, and then P to P will be zero itself, right? P to P should be zero only. Yeah, it is zero. Yes, zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, they are going from A to Y, which is. uh one this will be zero so one two three four four this and two we had uh, that one previous one from h to a from here to here and here to here so four plus two six you are getting yeah one thing here uh, shashank when you said yeah. you are on h okay yeah so you say h will be zero okay fine so then you move from h okay. to a that will be two correct but yeah. then uh, you came to p and then you said p Two p zero that is okay, still okay, but then why don't you move from p to y? 
instead of moving because from p to y you are moving from a to y because p to y if you will move that will be bigger distance no how will you move p to y 1 2 3 4 5 right i mean 1 1 2 3 4 5 or if you move like this way 1 okay. 2 3 4 5 but but every time when you are traversing you will always traverse in a sequence right so first you go to h okay then you go to a then no, you go to we p, have two p. fingers now okay so you like are a, saying that you are using the other finger from a correct yes yes two fingers here so it does it mean that i can stop my finger at one position and use it whenever i want that is true right yes so what if i do like i always use only one finger every time h one time okay go to a again one time pp also one time once you reach here yeah. so if i again use uh, only one finger every time it will be zero right so will that not be a very minimum yeah option? or always i have to use two fingers and sometimes i don't have to use so you have to you can't decide with one finger whether that will be a minimum distance or not right you have to check every possibility with both the fingers whichever gives you have, the minimum we have two choices at every, every index that uh, at which yeah. uh, which, which index which, through, uh, through which finger we are getting minimum and that will we will choose yeah so what i will do is you know i will use for all of them one finger and only the last or any place where i find the distance is only one only th then i use two fingers will that not work then no but how will you decide with worth one finger only at every index that will give you the minimum yeah exactly so you you did for h a p p y right so if you go for the other ones also like uh, the example 3 and 4 Okay, oh, there is three, new yeah. and year, right? Yeah. So oh. new is coming to three, and year is coming to seven. So because what I'm trying to say is, whenever you are moving two fingers, they don't have to be consecutive. That is agreed, but they have to be at least the next number, uh, next letters in the string, right? Or cannot it cannot be to the very other end? The reason why I'm bringing this, I was a bit confused. The way for the first uh, example, it is very clear. Second, so new. How will you go? How will you go for new line? Okay, yeah, we can try here. So new is n, okay, and then okay. e, right? So e and n, you are not going to take that. Okay. Right. Then you will just move your finger, which is on the e to w. That makes mm -hmm. sense, right? So then you yeah. get three. Okay. So now, in the case of y e a r, so you are in y, one finger on y, then you shift your finger to e, so that is a very uh, large distance, so you ignore it, okay, mm. correct, and then yeah. you go from e to a, that is four, okay, yeah. and then the second one will be you will move the finger which is on e to r, e to r, yeah, which is three. Before me, it didn't make sense. Why I have to use the second finger in this case? But you can move from E. You move to A, right? So your finger is at A. Your finger is not at E. Your first finger will be at A. No, second, you know, like first finger is at E, right? E to A, you are moving, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, so I first my finger was on Y, and then was in okay. E. So I just discarded that distance completely. So then I freshly start from E, okay, one finger on E, and then the second finger will be on A. So now first uh, finger is still on E. I think once you put your fingers on keyboard, then you can't make a fresh restart. So but from Y to E. So then Y to E, I am discarding Y in that case, correct? No. Why we are discarding Y? Because uh, first finger is at Y, right? One finger is at Y. Yeah, well, one finger is at Y. Second, I move to E, so I say, okay, yes. big distance. Th therefore, I, I was not very clear why this is because uh, you see the output. That that is the way they came up with the output. So I just ignore Y. I also ignore E. Okay, but then I start from E fresh, E and A. That is four, and then I move my finger, which is from E to R. That is three, 
and then I get a value of output seven. So therefore, four actually, is, I think from y to a is also four, and e to a is also four, right? Come again, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y to a, okay. But now, if you say you cannot just jump from y to a, okay, that 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 can also make sense. Yeah. So you just keep your finger on y. You don't move it. You just put your other <laughs> finger on e. Okay. E, yeah. Yeah, then you don't move that. But when you get to A, mm -hmm. then you move the finger from Y to A, and then e to Y. Yeah, yeah, e to that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. It makes sense. Can you just explain you again? Again? I'm sorry. I didn't get the second one. What you were discussing? No, so what Swetha was saying, you know, first you put your finger on Y. That okay. is your first finger. Second oh. finger will be on E. Okay. Now, so did, when you when you go to A, you move your finger, which is on Y, that is the first finger to A, okay, and uh, then when you go want to go to R, you move your sing, uh, finger from E to R, your second finger actually. So, so then from right Y to E, what will be the distance for right? Four, four, four. Okay. Next, what you'll do? Y to A will be four, and E to R will be three. E to R, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is clear now. But this is slightly tricky to come up, right? Yeah, it's okay. again. That means we can move our finger any time, right? Uh, like yeah, whenever that we find the distance too. short, yeah. whenever the, we find distance is less. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Like in this question, like it is given that uh, like we have to find the minimum. So it uh, it gives the indication that we have to use dynamic programming here, right? Your minimum and choice is also there. That also gives. Ah, you choice is minimum. also there. So if you don't have to use dynamic programming, what is the other way you can use? Backtracking. That is the, the backtracking recursion. That is again DP only. Like I mean, it will ah. boil to DP only. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what I mean is, instead of recursion, can we solve it the uh, any other way? Even if uh, it's a I, code. DFS. Uh, in the dynamic programming, we have to have something like a previous solution will give the result for the next uh, character, right? How do we use the dynamic programming here? I don't. I couldn't get. Okay. Yeah, therefore I actually will... I, 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 I can ex explain that. Uh, I'll... Uh, okay, just just hold. I think Dilip had something to say. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, okay. I, I okay. thought of uh, I thought of using binary search. Uh, uh, so uh, so let's say um, if I use only one finger to uh, type the whole word, uh, that would be my maximum uh, distance, and I take zero as minimum. Mm, I'm trying to find the mid value and see validate whether with that distance I can type the word. Uh, so that's uh, uh, if, if that is true, I will, I'll try to find a minimum possible uh, distance with which I can type. Can you show the sol solution no. if, if possible? Because please. Because no, no, I didn't implement. I, I got stuck with this. Uh, okay, okay. But I can explain on both. But the problem uh, I faced mm -hmm. with approaches. Uh, validating some solution with a value. Like if suppose I have a uh, maximum is 8 uh, and minimum is 0, uh, then I'm trying to see if I can type the word with uh, distance 4. Uh, to calculate the distance 4, uh, again I need to use somehow some DP or some backtracking to validate whether I can type the word with that distance. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So again somehow I made back to the DP solution, so I, I, I think it's DP will be needed here because without without DP you cannot find the minimize minimum distance because we have to optimize this. No, yeah. that that is fine. Actually, DP will be the ultimate solution. That is good, mm -hmm. but uh, there will be a brute force way always to do it, right? Brute force is exploring all possibilities to keep our end. Yeah, but actually, Dilip was saying the some other way, right? He was trying to use a binary search, and then he said you can use single finger to find the maximum number of combinations so i didn't get that so how can that work yeah, uh, how can that work? Uh, yeah. before that i think brute force would be um, 
uh, every time you you receive a call every time you you see whether uh, shifting your finger or without shifting your finger uh, which one would give you the shortest uh, uh, yes. shortest path distance that would be the answer that would be brute force uh, that, that is the brute force only oh, yes sir. okay uh -huh. so for every and case we have the two possibilities and in the dp i think we'll use the memo memorization ha uh, mem memorization yes memo right yes and mix of recursion and that of yes uh, mm. hmm okay yeah okay go ahead yeah ankur was sharing right yes sir can like, you uh, explain that on a higher wide board yeah huh. like a uh, now click on calligraphy like uh what uh, before uh, we are going to recursion we have to decide at what what is the what should be the base condition and uh, and what will be the states of my uh, what will be our what will be the parameters of my recursion that second is parameters that is p right so every time uh, i have the choices like uh, suppose i am at particular position I, mm -hmm. i have i have a particular choice that i have i have to move move position that finger one or finger two right mm -hmm. if i i am at the particular index of that uh, given string suppose i am i am at i and i have to i have to consider this uh, word at i from the, well, uh, in are, the given... are you sharing a different screen because we are just looking at that sketch pad okay 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 suppose uh, that i have to choose first base condition and and then uh, sorry first i have to choose the parameters of the recursion like i have to i have the three three parameters here like i have the uh, i have first i am at the particular index suppose i have i am at the i i position in the current word and i at that point i have two choices like i can move my finger one to that position that is in the board suppose that i a is there and my finger one is at f suppose and finger two is at suppose uh, um, e and then i have to make a decision like if i am uh, one finger at f and other finger at e so i have to i have to move which finger that will give me a minimum distance minimum cost to move to a that is the main criteria of the recursion that this 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 uh, decision i have to make so that i will do by calculating distance for so these two from from a you are going to f and e or from i mean you, two fingers no, no. are going no, actually actually i am at i and i uh, suppose i uh, previously i was uh, my fingers are, uh, are were at f and e so i am and designing here like i have to move to a now for okay. sure so what which finger i will use to get to a and a is at current index i Next character. Next character. Yes, yes, right. Oh, yes, yes, next character. Yeah. So I have to make decision like which finger I have to take to the A. If uh, my finger, one finger at F or another finger at E. And here it need not be in a sequence. We have to go parse the string. Is it uh, like no, E and F? Okay. But this not be a uh, greedy uh, solution uh, instead of a DP. we will have two more parameters right because we need to have the f and e value where it is right now no that will be stored in the uh, the the, the, the i will i am taking the f1 and f2 that is the finger one position and finger two position so that suppose it is part the, of the parameter right yes yes i am uh, saying that only that okay. that is okay. it is the, this is suppose f1 and this is suppose f2 mm -hmm. so f1 will store the coordinates where it is there and f2 is so the coordinates where it is there then i will uh, make the calculate the distance for f from f2 to a for, uh, position and f1 to a position that the the the, the position that suppose it is x1 and this is x2 so if x1 is less than x2 i will move my finger 1 to a if x2 is less than x1 then i will move a finger f2 to a make sense yeah mm -hmm. 
So whichever is the minimum, that finger will be moved, right? Yes, yes. In, at, at every stage, at every every recursive call. So once you let's say F one, you move to A. Now next time C character comes. So again from A and E, your F two is on E and F one is on A. So you F one is on A. Uh -huh. Huh. So F one the next character is let's say C is the next character. Yes. So you will check from A to C whether that is the minimum or from E to C which one I mean that no, is no. the minimum. No, no, uh, I will I will check from A to C cur that current position of F one and yes, then uh, yes. from E to C. So I have one question. Uh, you are yes. saying like you will have uh, the two F one and F two as parameter, mm -hmm. and then you will also have I as a parameter, mm -hmm. correct? I is the uh, index in the given string. Word of I, word of I. I think yeah, but why no, don't no. you actually assume that uh, I will be always the next position of either F one or F two? Why you have to take that as a parameter? Because. The I have to take this as a parameter because I have to take uh, I have to move my finger I have to choose move finger to make a next sequence now like I have to so, so make... if you have if you have f1 and f2 as indexes of uh, f1 and f2 itself right so you f1, f2, you indexes can... means so indexes of the word you know in uh, the word whatever the string what we given if we have just indexes if you ha just had that issue of finding what where you want to move because you will have to move always to the next position you don't you can't go back to the previous position right in a string if you are uh, if you take an example of h a p p y if your finger is on p you don't want to go from p to h correct mm -hmm. so you know that you can go either from p to p or p to y right because yes. you have those two conditions uh, f1 and f2 if i had that indexes of like P is now zero, one, two, three. If F one and F two were two and three, right? So you can either go from two to three for the F one, or from F two you can go from three to four. So will that not hmm. work? Because here also you are doing just by using that decision, correct? No, actually, uh, suppose uh, at first, at first, at first glance, uh, that if if uh, in the given question is there the, that. Uh, that uh, if you are putting the finger f1 and f2 uh, at some position that will be cos zero so that that we have to make decision and that on that basis uh, suppose i make i have chosen h and p initially i put my finger h at h and p and then i i will decide from that you now that I, I, next where it is closer than that, that i will choose so in how, at first you put two fingers at two uh, two words right like K uh -huh. is there. So C A you will will put finger one on C and finger A on finger two on A, right? One C. A, yes, you're right. And so then the third character. Yeah. Third character will uh -huh. be decided like which would be the nearest from F, whether it will be uh -huh. F one. And in recursion, it 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 would also be checked like if I put uh, on C A, then what it will give maximum minimum distance or not. And next and recursively it will check for C K first position, and then it will check for C E. Oh, that okay. if I put on CE, then what will be the distance initially? If I put on CK, then what will be the distance? If I put on CA, what will be the distance? And uh, that was Santosh is saying that uh, uh, that how it will be uh, give, given the, considered all these test uh, cases. Like if I put on CK, if I put on CE, then it may but that I will take minimum of these these three. Like at at, the, at last, if I return the to the main control. Right. So what, what, the reason why I'm bringing this point, you know, because hmm. if you take more number of parameters in a recursive call, and if you do a memoization, you will have to have a memo, you know, so yes. that array size, the ind uh, what you said, the dimension of the array will increase because if you have no, three no. of them, but I, I will ex I can explain is that like, suppose uh, no, but basically uh, I would avoid more space, you know, that is, that is what, for sure. I would try to take the minimum parameter as possible. Okay. Don't you think so? Because it looks the way you are explaining. I, I mm -hmm. understand that we will need three parameters, but but I was trying to understand why we need that and how we can come to that conclusion in an interview. You know, okay. That actually didn't strike me. It okay. I followed everything what they said. That is fine. Mm -hmm. But then why we have to have three parameters? Less than three. Be because I mean, this is a, this is a normal recursion function. That is okay. Or else, if you could get a recursive so, recurrence formula, you know. So, so what do you think? I mean, uh, I mean, what do you think here? That I mean, uh, why not the three parameter? 
you are less than 3 can you do uh, like two can yeah. you use and do what, what are my variable here only two finger variable. right and the index portion uh, also right so but your two yes. fingers are your indexes right but no, the, like, uh, no the, those are for the character but in the input string what character you are what is the next character you have to process now but you yeah, know yeah. that uh, you are on a particular index of a string right so can't you not use that and uh, extrapolate the other one where you want to go but which one will Actually, tell you that which one is the last character yeah for last you know, like, character whenever you go to any of the fingers you know that if you are on the nth of uh, index of your string then you are at the last character correct that will be no but but you have two fingers so don't know i mean whether the last thing uh, last one is uh, the finger one or finger two mm. yeah but you can always check both of the indexes for value n but but how is no, i did not follow you i mean what are you so when you are I in a base condition f, yeah yeah go ahead yeah. sorry f1 and f2 have the previous index right so i will give the next index i think something like that right mm -hmm. yeah i i will give you the current index what yeah. next character yeah. you have to process yes yeah mm -hmm. yeah and f1 and, f and f2 are already there and i is the thing which we have to find like the shortest yes, distance yes. to that particular uh, index two fingers the, yeah yeah so f1 and f2 are not telling me that what was the 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 last character whether it was from the f1 or f2 hmm. it could be possible that since last two move i'm just moving f1 only okay so uh, right yeah maybe so, yeah uh, in the in one in another here yeah. okay go ahead like i'll share in the okay. proceed okay. no i'm i'm saying yeah that might be possible but i really couldn't understand because if someone comes up and so okay just go for it and try to implement i would never come up with this approach it would be very difficult so i was trying to understand how to come up for this approach you know yeah like, what uh, you guys are saying it yeah, maybe yeah that is like in this thinking, yeah. which like, variable you okay. found to be redundant like what do you uh, mean by approach uh, uh, santosh the that recursive <laughs> approach or the memoization no i i mean you know like if you have two fingers then you need another index to follow in the string for the next position we have to take that right no mm. yeah yeah so yeah, yeah how you will to, get that index how you yeah. will get mm. that index so we need to pass that it did not strike to me i was doing it just with f1 and f2 for a long time and then realized it's a big mistake Okay. I, 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 uh, since I, 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 I thought that I, I mean you point. have some solution for <laughs> some some. No no no, I'm I'm just uh, okay. doing a brainstorming. So if you guys oh, okay. can come up cool. with yeah yeah. Do we no, have I, any I, alternative solution than this? Because I couldn't come up with this also, so I couldn't. I, I got your point, uh, like Santosh. Like, mm -hmm. I think that uh, what you are saying that in that in your approach and how you will get the uh, uh, another index of that uh, that. Uh, how you will get uh, get the another another character next character even in the sequence that because without the index i with which will process next that how will get how will they choose the decision how will take the decision that this i will this i will put the finger and this will be give the minimum distance that how will how will they uh, test these test cases that first two fingers i will put here then i will put here then i will put here and how will decide in that case i don't don't will get me yeah so because you know every time you can move your uh, fingers only mm -hmm. to your very next element or your next to next element i never knew that your finger can be moved from first index to the fifth index that is also possible uh, that is also possible that so yeah uh, so that that did not occur to me reading at the examples correct mm -hmm. so if you take some big word like submit or so then you will come to know how the variations are they actually run from anywhere you know ha huh, anywhere ha huh? yeah so for that yeah what do you say makes sense uh, it, we can use that uh, index uh, i also but uh, that actually occurred to me when i looked at this solution and started printing all the what do you say the variable and indexes then i came to know okay they are using it everywhere you know so this was very hard for me to even understand and coming up with the solution was slightly on a very like no like what i that like what i like what i do basically that before understanding recursion is that i make a choice diagram like at every at every stage i make a choice diagram like 
I we I have to take the minimum, right? So mm -hmm. suppose I am I am at the particular index i. Mm -hmm. So I have two choices. Like I can move my finger one, right? Mm -hmm. This you understand that I can move my word one finger one to that particular word, to uh, to that particular word. Suppose it is a. So I can move my finger one to a or to my fing or my finger two to a. So these two choices I have. So to get to that word a, I need that index. I need that index of uh, i, and i is needed here because I need to find that uh, the, the index of the a in the particular uh, that in the given cross body is given in the question that that, that they defined there. No, I think what Santosh here? is telling me with two you if you use bottom up no with two parameters you can do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bottom, down, is, are... bottom is completely different. Yeah. <laughs> this option solution, right? Yeah. Four yeah, this is still this... difficult to, to yeah. really think about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, because this is the top down what he is talking. Angur is talking, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, because uh -huh. someone yeah, explained but... in the discussion forum, you know, that in a forty-five minutes interview, you cannot come with a bottom-up approach. That is very difficult. Very difficult. You are expert <laughs> in a very a dynamic programming, and the so, best way, even if you are expert. You will always know a top-down approach that will be sufficient for an interview, and the exactly. top-down approach be. itself, the way he explained, was good. Then only I came to understand all that. But uh, still, it's not very intuitive. That is what I'm trying to say. If we can get something, yeah, but that's good. Yeah, like, let's go ahead. Yeah, but with like, two uh, parameters, you can use that uh, bottom-up, right? Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the top-down, like if you look at the solution, there's like two versions. One version is where you use the three variables, and then the second version is where you just use two variables. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I use use the yeah like call, they call that one the optimized top down. Like if you just look at the highest voted solution, there's two versions. Okay. That is what uh, bottom up is two variable one. I mean, mm. using two variables. bottom up. Yeah. Bottom yeah, up is yeah. very difficult to understand at what they exactly. are doing. <laughs> but I think Santos was focusing on that. I mean, I'm not uh, sure. Like, no, no. I mean, they're both top down. I think Santos and uh, Anchor, the the two different approach are both top down. But there's two different versions for the top down. You can use oh. three variables or you can use two variables. Oh, okay. in top down you only saw like two variables. Can, can you just share that link in that uh, chat if possible, Annie? I'm, 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 yeah, sure. I'm more. going to paste it now. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what I, uh, up to now, point uh, I made you understand that I have, uh, that I have to decide the states in DP. Mm. So, states in DP will be like uh, first is that position of finger I, that, uh, that is my F1, that is current position of F, that my, of finger one. And second is F2. That is the current position of uh, that uh, of the finger two, and third will be the position that is I'm current processing the in the word I, in the word sorry. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now I have to decide my base case. That what is what will be my base case? Since uh, here it is very easy to decide base case because. Uh, are you sharing a different screen now? Because we are on that notepad yet. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. One uh, confusion uh, I have, like uh, uh, okay. that C, uh, C, A, C, K, uh, C, K, and C, E. So we'll take that A, K, and K also. Now that also will be computed, right? Uh, C, A. What is it? Uh, it cake. Cake is the word, and uh, like uh, we have put our two fingers on C, A, C, mm -hmm. K, and mm -hmm. C, E. So we'll also uh, check this A, K. And A uh, E also, no, all combinations. No, that will, uh, all combinations will be checked. There, therefore, okay. it is two k power n. It is will be two k power n exponential without using yeah, yeah, memorization. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it, since here it is easy to decide base case because we are using i. So obviously the base case will be like uh, if i reaches the word length, like uh, l e n of word, then i will return what zero. Because I am, uh, I am now. I have approached the. I have processed all the words uh, since. Therefore, I will return zero here. Am I getting clear here? Clear? 
So uh, you have one more doubt, like how you are initially deciding whether CA, AK or KE, where two fingers will you put? Because initially both the fingers will be at none, right? Oh, uh, none. Yes, so, there will be none. So minimum how you are calculating? I mean, you'll calculate Min all the uh, 4C to 6 possible distances and minimum of that you will take and put two fingers. Like how, how do you proceed? No, uh, like? Uh, like I I I I can show you my in my code now, like if possible. No no uh, yeah yeah that's good one. But you are explaining this t is equal to len. What what is act, act, exactly that before going to the code? Huh. Actually, that this is the my base case. That if I reach the end end of my uh, that word. Okay. That, mm -hmm. Then uh, that suppose it is i is equal to equal to that end of the end index. That then I will return zero because I process all the words, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Got it. Sorry. Yeah. yeah go ahead with what Shashank was saying. Yeah. No problem. Thank mm -hmm. you. So uh, that I can show you uh, uh, my code now. I can explain the code. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So my question was initially, where will you put the two fingers? Like uh, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not explaining that only. That to my code. Okay. Okay. It is visible. Uh, yeah. Okay. Code. Code is Same visible. Time. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what 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 was the, the initial question? That um, I'm, what I am doing, uh, taking here is a map. Map what what we will do? Like it map will store the index of A, B, C, D, E, and F. But first, I am doing that. That uh, first, how it, I am doing is that. Like suppose I I took the uh, I equal to zero. Uh, that is the index. That is the current counter of the number of words. And I initialize the one character S T as A. Then what I did that to find that, uh, that to find the row because since there are six characters in the row, therefore uh, six characters in the row. Therefore I uh, divided by six. So therefore it it, uh, it will give me the row number and modulo six will be in the, will give me the row number uh, column number. Right. Yeah. And then uh, I made, um, incremented the st and i also. So this will this will uh, this will store the like A will be stored to zero zero B will be stored a uh, map to zero one C will be zero as so a map to zero two like that it will be go go like it will go. Right. So this. So you are this, actually uh, storing the whole uh, that keypad in your map. Yes, in the map to the get the coordinates of that keypad. Okay. Huh, huh, to get the coordinates of the uh, word I'm processing currently. Mm -hmm. And this is clear that i by six and i modulo six. Yeah, that is. Yeah, clear. that is one is per row, other is per position in that row. Huh. Now what I am doing is that first I'm uh, first I'm I have to decide like I have to since I have to consider all the test cases. Therefore, I what I am taking is that f one and f two I'm passing here. F one is finger two, it is finger one, and this is the current index and this is the word, right? And uh, okay. I take in this uh, dp array. This is very intuitive to know because. I, uh, since the word length is maximum given here, like 300, right? And uh, okay. I can, and uh, I have first taken first parameter as I, so I can take this as 301 length. And second is 28 because maximum uh, characters can be 20, 26 at max. Yeah, because, because it is a lower case, uh, upper case, that is what we Upper case, uh, 26, 26 at max. So therefore, for F2, it is for F1, this is for F2. So therefore, I, uh, it will be 28 and this 28. You can do 27 also, but why, I will uh, just uh, explain you that why I took 28. So DP301 can can't we make it the word length dot word length dot uh, plus one? But in we that case, I have to I have to pass uh, to the uh, recursive function every time. So that that that, that will also work, but uh, I have to take uh, one parameter as uh, as uh, uh, int DP like that. I have to take. Because uh, that will be uh, initialized here now. Yeah, so you could initialize in the minimum distance, right? So that also makes sense, right? Yeah, you could do that. Uh, we can do that, but you have to pass in the recursive function. Not that, needed uh, to pass in the recursive function. You can just actually initialize it the minimum distance and assign that uh, DP. Instead of using uh, array, you could use a vector. Uh, vector. Yeah, that can uh, be done, yeah. yeah. yeah no and that can be every vector. So uh, what I did is that uh, since I have to take as uh, this two as none, that I have, I have not not any position. So I take to come an invalid position. That is for f1 and f2. That is 27. Since maximum characters are 26, so I took invalid position for f1 and f2. That is 27. 
therefore i took here 28 right okay then yeah, so if uh, like where is the first two words i mean how you are dis- like f1 and f2 initially where mm-hmm. will be the first position for that uh, like i i am i am uh, telling you that that's uh, i'm cal- uh, i'm one made of one function that is calculated for cal 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 function if mm-hmm. uh, that uh, first i have to uh, in question it is given that that the the first fresh uh, start if i do then first two two fingers when i am putting that will cost me zero right so if the finger that it is i'm passing if it is 27 it means that i am starting for that finger it is i'm choosing a starting uh, position for that finger that i will return as zero sorting no no that i am taking an start- invalid position and that invalid position is initializing that yeah so initially both are at none like yeah, yeah yeah it will be at none right huh? then uh, how will he put the first from there or oh, from none he will calculate the distance to the next element right, right. Like, yes yes huh. okay okay then yeah perfect so uh, uh, since i passed 27 here so i will check i'm checking here if it is 27 it means it is in valid position so i'm uh, doing a fresh start for this for this finger like i'm choosing the position for this finger so i will return zero yeah for that and then i will recursively call for i plus 1 and f1 will be at word of i minus 8 because uh, because uh, that, uh, for, to get the zero and for to synthesis so 26 character length and then f2 and word similarly for choice choice 2 will be like f2 and between word i will calculate distance then this times f1 will remain constant and i will uh, update f2 mm. right and then at uh, last i will uh, t- take the minimum of this choice one and choice two so in minimum you have only two choice one choice two but dp is a 3d dp it is so i also you have to take note like i comma choice one choice two return dp of i f1 f2 there you have uh-huh. written minimum of choice one choice two uh-huh. so it's uh, so at which particular index will you put which one how will you which particular index means that I I considered here mm-hmm. that uh, that in uh, distance plus the next uh, I calculated in that choice one and choice two. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to use the two fingers f one and f two, and then he is using the i as another oh. position, comparing f one with i and f two with i, yes, and uh, from i to f two and i to f one. You know the other yes. way, right? Yeah. So he's just adding that i in between f1 and f2, mm-hmm. and just okay. reverting it in the first choice uh, is, is the straight way, but in choice two is reverting it because choice mm-hmm. one is going from f1 to f2 and choice two is going from f2 to f1. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then this cal function, what is doing is that uh, it, it, it instant, instantly instantly that uh, calculate the pair. It will take the pair of the uh, that. F1, where is F1 position, and for the new that is where I pass the word here. That is what this one, and I am calculating distance here. Yeah. Yep. This is fine. Yeah. Very clean code. Please share that on the chat. I mean, coming with this, like. (laughs) I know. Yeah, but at least uh, we have some. Yeah, it is clear. I, I, it's clear to me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's clear to everybody. Yeah, yeah. No problem. So that was a good discussion for today. Yeah. Shashank, yeah, yeah. Sorry. You want, it's you want. I mean, it's same thing only. Nothing. Like, I'm starting. This is like creating a, this for just calculating the distance, absolute distance, what they have mentioned. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and this is like once you reach the length of the word, like you have finished every, I mean, the word, the last you have re- reached, then return zero. And this is a memoization step. If you find that this value is present in your memo, then just return from there itself. Otherwise, you have two choices from F1 to go, either go to this word, this particular character go to this particular, I mean, this is like calculating the distance and then choosing it for the next, like 
A to B you went. So your finger went to F1, and from mm -hmm. there to the next character. So these are the two possible choices, and minimum of them I'm updating in my memo. And this is like creating a position for every character. I'm, I mean, all this since they are given uppercase, so A will be marked with wherever it's along with the index and in what is the row number and and particular row where is that in which column that is present. That this map will give corresponding to a. I mean, corresponding to every element of the board, they'll give you the coordinates of it. And okay. Yeah. That's one. So what I was talking like where some like bottom of there. So yeah, Ankur. When uh, Swetha said to share the code, you can share it in the Discord channel because the chat will go. You know, yeah. you just share in the chat, right? So this will go away when we close the Zoom. And instead of instead of pasting the code, you can just actually um, share the link. Maybe yeah, you yeah, you can share the link and paste bin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry, uh, you go ahead, uh, Shashank. Yeah, no, I'm, I haven't understood as much. Like this is the bottom of what they are using it. So this like is for this the is... the new one, right? What? Uh, like what I... right? Yeah. Good. Uh, well, yeah. What the, he has said. Yeah. No, like not the. What, what I'm what saying said. here is that. Hmm. Go ahead. Like what I'm saying is is that it is he is not also uh, dependent on the previous steps. What we do in bottom up, like uh, we calculate on the previous step problems. But what he is doing is that he is also considering the uh, uh, ahead of the, the, the in dungeon places, dungeon one, the problem what we do, standard dungeon princess, that he is also mm -hmm. at, uh, doing that same bottom up approach like that. I think so. Because in dungeon also we consider the uh, the ahead of one because we have to uh, check the all the, 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 the uh, possibilities ahead of that before doing that position. Mm. Yeah, check it. Yeah. I'll share this link. Yeah, please. Yeah. No. Is it like easy to come up with such a solution in like 30, 45 minutes? I'm not <laughs> sure. That, that's what we are here to discuss, you know, and to understand it more. <laughs> And we have different. Options. I mean, it's it's uh, possible. That's not. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in DP is all that. If you uh, understand, uh, get that idea for the recursive so, uh, recursion formula, then hmm. the core.